What's going on Twitter? I'm Dan, the burn unit. It's hard to have political discourse on Twitter because you only get 160 characters per tweet. I've certainly tried to explain myself over the course of several tweets, but I don't know how much of them get seen. So I just wanted to make a little video. Maybe I can explain myself a little bit better. I was raised in a household that was fully democratic and I voted de uh, democratic tickets top to bottom since I could first start voting in 98 or 99, whenever the, uh, the Al Gore election was. Voted for Gore, voted for Kerry, voted for Obama. But uh, over time, I've learned that the Democratic Party that I thought was for people um, seems to not be, the more research I did. Now, this is coming from someone who I listened to Air America Radio all the time. Uh, I had a library of anti-Bush books. I was a Michael Moore fanatic. I went to Move On events. And I met Al Franken at one of the Move On events. I went door to door. Um, I made calls for um, Bernie Sanders, as you may know. Maybe Bernie Sanders isn't the best answer, isn't the best uh, thing to mention to Democrats, since it seems the Democratic establishment and a lot of Democratic voters didn't like him because he wasn't a registered Democrat for a long time. But the reason I backed Bernie Sanders was not because he was a Democrat, and not even so much that he was an independent. It was the fact that I liked his policies, I, look, I liked where he stood. Here I am, I'm finding myself uh, banned by the Donald Trump Reddit for questioning them. They were posting the hidden camera footage from the Veritas Project on Hillary Clinton staffers saying they could do anything and not get in trouble. Uh, and I questioned them, I said, hey, I wonder if there's any hidden camera footage from real Donald Trump if there was, and you guys are so sure that he's such a um, strong, positive character, that if we had any hidden camera footage from him, I'm sure he would be saying all these great things, and wouldn't that be a wonderful thing to show to counter Hillary's hidden camera footage? But they thought I was a troll, and they blocked me. Then there's the extremely liberal Raw story, which I have have visited for so long, and I commented for so long, but recently I've been uh, posting things, um, questioning and, and countering their articles. In all of these cases, I don't post any threats. I don't post anything racist, sexist. I just question, and that seems to be enough for the Donald Trump to ban me as a troll and for Raw Story to ban me without any information. And now here I am getting into a huge spat, well, not a huge spat, with uh, Liz Winstead of The Daily Show. Um, there's all these people liking her comment and tell, telling me to fuck off and that I don't have priorities for some people. I have priorities for everyone. I have compassion for everyone. And I understand that Liz is concerned with abortion and making sure that women have access to good, affordable, proper health care and abortion services. And I completely support a woman's right to choose. Completely. Um, from early to late term. I'm looking at a bigger picture, not just women that uh, need access to abortion, which I want them to have. I don't want them to go out into the back alleys and have, you know, the old cult coat hanger abortions or something can still be as equally unsafe. I don't like what Texas did closing down certain Planned Parenthoods by setting these impossible standards for Planned Parenthoods to keep up to. So half of them were closed and now people in Texas have to drive across state to get an abortion. All of that is ridiculous and it, and it shouldn't happen. The problem is, is that I don't think the candidate that everyone thinks is gonna help that, Hillary Clinton, one, I don't know if I believe her because everything that she said, most of it seems to be a lie. So I don't know if I can trust her on that. Her running mate, even though he says he's not going to do anything to prevent abortion and is not gonna change the laws, he personally is against abortion. In my career in public life, I've supported um, restrictions on abortion. You know, in some of those areas where I've supported restrictions on abortion, not all on the left have appreciated it, but I think it, it has been important to do that because there's a moral gravity, I think, to abortion as an issue that has to be respected. My, my voting 
position on abortion hasn't really changed. I am a Catholic and I accept the church's teaching on this issue when it comes to matters of whether it's abortion rights, contraception, but you used intimacy to have a different position, right? I mean, not, on the, not on this, no look. Not I'm, on Hyde. I've, I've, well, on Hyde, my position is the same. I support the Hyde Amendment, I haven't changed that. So that makes me question what his motives might be because this is an election cycle where he wants to get elected and I don't know how many elections we need to go through where we're going to find out that, oh, they say things that the voters want to hear to get elected. This always happens. So how do we know that he's not going to change his mind and then start trying to do things to limit abortions in some way once he's in power as vice president? We don't know. And the same thing goes for Donald. He says all these ridiculous things. He's insane. I agree he's sexist and racist. In the 90s, he was saying he completely supports a woman's right to choose. I just believe in choice, but I am strongly for choice. You would not ban it? No. Or ban partial birth abortion? No, I would, I would, I am, I am pro-choice in every respect. You do think that there should be exceptions for rape and incest? Yes, uh, and so, life, you know, the health of the mother, the death, life. because, you know, you have some cases where the mother may die. Would you make sure that that exception or those exceptions would be in the Republican Party platform? Well, I think it would be something I would discuss very seriously with the people in the Republican Party. So which is right? Was he lying then? Is he lying now? I don't really know. Both candidates lie so much and change their stories so much, I don't know who to believe from either of the two main parties. I can't trust either of them. Um, all I can go by is what some what voting records there are and Hillary Clinton has voted for war she has supported fracking and pipelines these things are gonna not only hurt women who are pregnant who will want abortions it's gonna hurt women who aren't pregnant it's gonna hurt men it's gonna hurt children it's gonna hurt everyone global warming is a global issue and so is war that's currently killing women men children right now so I'm trying to look at a bigger picture you know as a, going back as I was saying, where I used to like listen to Air America Radio all the time, I was active on Think Progress, on um, now reading The Intercept, which I think is a great little um, sort of spinoff from Think Progress, created by people who had worked on Think Progress. Reading Huffington Post all the time until they got a little too uh, in the can for Hillary. I was at that point where I was very polarized and fought anyone who wasn't completely with a Democrat mindset. Um, yelling at Bush protesters when I went to see Kerry speak uh, at a college. I've been in that polarized mindset. Um, and right now I find myself in this middle way point where I realize I don't think I can trust either political side. And so I, my time on Twitter now, I'm trying to just have people challenge them on their polarized beliefs and see if they can see things from another way. And that's all I'm trying to do. That's what I tried to do with Liz. You know, I, I didn't attack her. I just said, there's there's this third candidate. I don't trust either of them. And then I get a fuck you, fuck off uh, from her. But I understand that Twitter is not the location to have political discourse, as I said. So she might not have been intentionally as mean as it came off. You just need to condense what you want to say into a very small tweet. And sometimes that causes you to get a little bit more aggressive in your language because you're trying to get as much oomph into one small tweet as possible, which I'm certainly guilty of. Or maybe she was just really trying to be mean and that's just all she wanted to say. I don't know. But if you look at the follow-up tweets, I thanked her anyway for engaging in conversation with me because a lot of people don't, don't do that anyway, uh, even if it was he did. So I do want to say, you know, I, I appreciate, especially as a creator of a daily show, I'm sure she's a very busy woman and doing a lot of great things, probably doing tons of stuff that I support. Like if she's helping women get the proper abortions, that's wonderful and I completely support that. But again, if I can just explain myself in as simple and short terms as possible, I'm looking at it from a larger issue. I'm not trying to look at it specifically from a democratic point of view. I'm trying to back off and say, hey, maybe neither of the two major candidates really are the best choice for us. Even if there's a couple of things in their platforms we think we may agree with, one, I don't know if we can trust them anymore, and two, there's a much larger issue that affects far more people and that's where my concern is, trying to 
work a bigger picture and not trusting even the small steps that are being promised by the two major political parties. That's why I wanted to vote for Bernie Sanders, and that's why I'm going to vote for Jill Stein. And if it turns out that that was a shit choice for me to make, then I'm going to be extremely disappointed, but I'm still voting my conscience f because of where I currently stand in my thought process and what I believe and what I've seen. Uh, this is what I believe is the best choice, is a vote for Jill Stein. I think I have every right as an American citizen to vote my conscience and vote who I want. And I don't appreciate being used as a chess piece in this political game is the analogy I've used where the Democrats don't really care about my vote unless I'm voting for their candidate. It's not about a democracy where I'm allowed to vote for whom I want. It's going to be about we need our candidate in power. And I don't think that candidate's going to change anything. We're still going to have dirty money in politics. So we're still going to have politicians fighting against issues that we want to have solved. And we're still going to go to war. We're still going to have oil companies in power. Uh, that's just not where I am. I, I don't want that as much as I don't want to see a woman have restrictions on her choices with her body. But I need to look at the bigger picture. I need to make sure we're solving everything and not voting for someone who claims to be an advocate of a few issues and worse, not really have a track record to back up those views. That's where I stand. Thank you. Goodbye.